This is the Black Star Square in Ghana, West Africa, also known as Independence Square. Sub-Saharan Africa is a continent of young nation-states, and this place is a monument for their freedom and autonomy. Although many countries remain fragile, they've also seen significant political progress in the last two decades. Ghana has experienced one of the world's most successful transitions to a multi-party democracy. We've had about four different military regimes. Uh, and any time that we attempted to go for democracy, then a year or two, uh, you have the military coming in and destabilizing the democratic process. However, since 1992, when we made this new transition to democracy, uh, it's, over, it's been over 20 years and we have been able to stabilize, uh, deepen um, the democratization exercise. There are also some concerns around institutional effectiveness, uh, fighting corruption. How could the democratic institutions that we have could translate into economic uh, well-being or economic prosperity of the people? Once a certain political stability is secured, how can such a young democracy succeed in fighting poverty? This is a research trip with the scientific project Nopur to visit families in a village near Accra, the capital city. The aim is to find out more about basic public welfare for the poorest people in the country. Economist Regina Amanfo is here to meet Hawa Salifu, the head of the family. She receives $2.70 per month in governmental support. Field research with a democratic approach. Those who often lack a voice can convey their feelings, opinions and perspectives to independent researchers. From the reality of poor people to scientific analysis and results, the team from the Centre of Democratic Development in Ghana prepares a policy workshop in Accra. The researchers see themselves as intermediaries between those on the ground and those who claim to be making policies for the poor. Even though poverty has fallen, absolute poverty standards have fallen, inequalities have deepened, you know, and inequality creates discontent and social disorder. With discontent, we cannot move this nation forward. Everybody needs to be able to enjoy the benefits in a way that is fair and effective and sustainable so that what we're enjoying now can give birth to future development of this country in a way that is responsive. Now that is what projects like uh, No Poor do for us. They give us the evidence. They give us the options to do programs, not because they look nice or because they work in other places, but because that is the way to intervene. What matters is moving the findings, moving the results into the policy stream. To welcome you to this Africa Policy Conference of the Research Consortium Emmanuel Guima Boadi is a co-founder of the Afrobarometer, a leading data source on how Africans perceive their country's politics. I think that through 
projects and programs such as the you know, poor through projects such as the Afrobarometer, we are also moving towards the ideal of citizens and independent researchers and non-state actors being able to speak on equal terms with their government authorities, with their government officials. In doing all of this, we are moving closer to the ideal of a government by citizens and for citizens. States and political systems play a major role in the fight against poverty. This is the House of Parliament in Accra. The morning session is in full flow. By mid-2016, more than 20 political parties were registered in Ghana, a sign of political growth. Citizens can follow the debate on a screen next door and can apply for a face-to-face -face meeting with a member of parliament. Among those who seek direct contact is the student John Siade. I think it's also a great opportunity to see your MP personal, to have your personal issues with him. Yes, yes, as I said, it is sometimes personal. Yes, and so others too, it is maybe somebody wants something to help, especially during these times, the election year like this. People come, they have their representatives, they tell them more about what goes on in their constituency, how people are responding to their campaign, and then everything that is going on in their constituency. My first time, it was a bit of scary for me. Yes, I didn't know which way to turn at the first time. I have to be asking people. At the gates where I saw the police, at that place too, I felt a bit scary. But in all, I, 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 I was bold enough and then I, I passed through the process and I was able to come. A challenge to the democratic exercise also for future generations. Many voters here assume that a member of parliament is directly responsible for supporting them. A research result with strong policy implications. Citizens need more information to hold politicians responsible when election time comes. Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak, a member of parliament, reacts to the research results. I was I was really amazed that the view from the policy on the no poor, especially that has to do with election, virtually reveals most of the secrets. I think I thought it was a secret within the political realm. When I saw the brief, I said, "Wow, everything is out now." The role of the MP is to be your representative, to be a lawmaker, to play an oversight on government. So then it becomes useful for the poor. I'm in politics because I want to help my people. You are into research because you want to help the people. If all of us' attention is the people, then why should we have great differences among us? We need to find a way of meeting and taking whatever you do into whatever we work to help solve the problem of the poor people. This family lives at the lowest line of poverty. Here, they're preparing fish to sell on the streets. Poor people's interests and needs are very often not reflected in policy spaces, and they're also susceptible to vote buying. Again, citizens' information is the key word. Their rights, national budgets, and how they're used for local needs, amongst other things. The whole essence of democratic society is how you create the space, the opportunity for ideas to come, so that based on this general multiplicity of ideas, uh, we can have a, a policy or program that can uh, really address the needs of the people. In future, make it so okay. Wow. Okay. Pilot. Wow. Yeah. Future pilot. She study hard. Yeah? Because my future pilot, she can study hard. Yeah? What do you want to be in future? A footballer like Messi or Ronaldo. <laughs> they need to train hard yeah. and become a good footballer. Study hard as well. Let's study hard as well, eh? So I can get to profession. <laughs> what do you want to become in the future? I want to become a medical doctor. A medical doctor. Wow. 
you need to study hard, yeah? I want a Ghana in which all children who are born have an equal opportunity, I mean, have an equal chance of living and living to a healthy old age. A Ghana in which the ch all children who are born have access to education that uses their capacities and gifts to the fullest. I want institutions that work where you can go in there and expect an effective service. I want a situation where nobody feels helpless. I would like to f let people feel understood, connected, and you know, part and parcel of what is going on in their countries in ways that make them um, feel content, make them feel that nothing has gone to waste in their lives. The in-depth links between people's well-being and political institutions in the focus of scientific research. Toward more accountable institutions and national policies that support the poor. Break the chain of poverty.